So I'm going through the triple purge in the vacuum. You see how the high is lower than the low? That's because I'm draining the nitrogen out of the low side. It's coming from the compressor, traveling through the low side, going across, coming out the yellow, and then I have it loosened right here and I'm bleeding it off here. So I had the pressure on the high side really high and I actually put some dye in there. So I blew some dye in there too. And then I had it go through the expansion valve. It goes through the evaporator and uh, well, the high side from here backwards will go through the condenser first and then out of the condenser through the receiver dryer, then through the receiver dryer, then through the expansion valve, then through the evaporator, then out the suction side of the evaporator and come down this long hose then come all the way right here and all the time that nitrogen is pushing the little bit of moisture from me going down to 500 microns it's pushing and sweeping it off the surfaces of the hose and off the oil and all the metal components through and out to the atmosphere so now i have the high side closed and so that was the bleeding off that was one purge i already did one so this is the second one and so now i keep the low side open the high side is closed. Now I'm going to pull a vacuum from the low side because I want to continue that sweeping motion because I'm going to do it again. So let's open it up. Yeah. Open it up. And now I'm pulling the nitrogen that's remaining in the system through that same routine. It's leaving this hose, what's left in here at zero PSI. It's traveling all the way down. It's being pulled from the suction side. And I'll go down to 500 again and then I'll do it a third time. I'll get it down below 500 and I'll close off the high, the low side like this. We're gonna pretend I'm gonna do it right now. Close off the low side, close off the vacuum. I would have the nitrogen sitting here, um, say 20, 50 PSI, whatever, zero PSI, because you're only gonna let a few PSI in and then I would open up the high side and let it go through the high side and you'll read the pressure come up on the low side and you continue that sweep motion and uh, do that at least three times. And uh, all right, so now I gotta get back. Let's, let's get this back open correctly. Uh, there we go, it's going back down. As you can see, I'm, I'm pulling down on the low side and it's slowly following on the high side because I have the high side off. So the sensor is reading the pressure in the low and the high side, but I'm drawing vacuum from the low side. And you see how the low is lower than the high side. They're both in negative. And just keep that scenario up for a while and we'll do it again and again. And cause this thing, just by the smell of it, I could tell it was abused and badly. Uh, neglected by the way it was topped off and recharged in its past history. They are so lucky they have that big iron uh, compressor. This old thing. Uh, let's see what we got back there. Big old chunk of iron. Yep. And, um, and as you can see, we're into the micron level right now. Just pulling from the low side, not the high side. And um, I'll get it down below. 500 microns and I'll repeat the flush again and then put it on its final vacuum and get it back down again because I want to try to get this as dry as possible because I don't want an intermittent non-cooling complaint about a high moisture level because sometimes high moisture levels under the right temperature operating conditions can cause an ice plug dam on the inside after the expansion valve and limit the amount of flow into the evaporator of refrigerant and it gives that customer he says every now and then on these certain days times it was blowing cold for a little while and then after 15 20 minutes of operation it started blowing warm and it's not because ice formed on the outside that's a different problem that will limit flow of air through the coils no you still have the 100 percent flow going through the coils it's literally internal in the liquid side inside as the liquid leaves the expansion valve and flashes and gets cold on the other side depending on the pressures and the temperatures you can literally form ice crystals on the inside i've seen that before and you can usually fix it by a good evacuation and or changing a receiver dryer sometimes by doing what i did here you lower the amount of moisture to the point where it doesn't you still have moisture contamination but not to the point where you'll literally get clogged up inside. 
All right, see you guys later. I got to finish this guy out and uh, get done here because, oh shit, what time is it? Oh yeah, I got another one. I got two vacuum pumps on another shop I got to get back to and fill up right now too. Forgot about that. See you guys.